So right. Jessica, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, let people ask questions uh, while they have questions right now. So we can consider this part of the after hours now. Okay, and perfect. Just... Great, it looks like we have a 417 number. You are unmuted, go right ahead. Hi, this is Barb from Missouri. Uh, I just wanted to thank y'all for doing this uh, webinar series. Oh, you're uh, very welcome, due Barb. To it, due to it, you convinced me to order the Wayland with the 20% off. <laughs> and yeah, today's webinar is just, I'm floored with the amount of things that can be done with those. Um, so I really, really appreciate y'all putting on this webinar and y'all are doing such a great job and I can't wait to see what else you're going to do in the future. Oh, thank you, Barb. I really appreciate that. And I forgot to mention that we will be sending out a survey afterwards. Um, we will definitely do some additional webinars in the future and we'd love to hear from all of you what would be helpful. So please fill out the survey, send us an email. Um, it'll, it may be a few days before I can pull the survey together, but be on the lookout for it. Um, and we'll do another one of these pretty soon. Thanks again, Barb. Uh, v Baldwin, you are, I've unmuted you and you can unmute yourself. Uh, Command Shift A on the Mac, you're on. Great, thank you. Um, a while back you were talking about how to use the tags in a conference type of situation or a hotel. And I didn't understand how you would find the tag. You know, if you want to know where the bathroom is and then you want to go to the drinking fountain, you have to find the tag, don't you? Yes, yeah, that's a great question. And I'm glad you asked it because several other people had the same question. Darwin, do you want to take that one? <clears throat> yes, excellent question. Um, First part of the question was uh, we, when we talked about having all of the tables uh, tagged in the conference center, uh, I think there was like 150 tables, just typical uh, three by six or three by eight tables. What we did is we put a tag in the, uh, in the bottom right corner, or, you know, in the very front right corner, so that when you walked up to a table, all you would do is go to the right end of that table and that tag is very tactful. You can feel it. Uh, we actually had some little clips on there that made it even stand out a little bit more. Uh, but you could just scan that uh, particular tag and know exactly where you were. Uh, you can also find out the information about the tables next to you, to that table to the left or the right. And you can also go to a index of all the tables in the uh, conference room to be able to find out if, uh, if you wanted to go to a particular table, you would just look them up. So that's how we handle that in the conference center. The question about uh, how do you find a tag to go to the restrooms and that type of stuff? Well, first off, uh, we, the, the standard place that we are going to start with putting tags will be associated with ADA signs. Uh, right now you can find an ADA sign by simply finding the door. Uh, once you get to a, a door, uh, that, that uh, ADA sign is either to the left or to the right of the door. It's supposed to be, sometimes they put it on the door. Uh, we will, tr you know, we will try to help people get those uh, ADA signs located correctly, but we will probably put our, uh, our weight tags directly below the ADA sign. Uh, we will, our tags, we will create a, a small little plaque. It may be about the size of a credit card, you know, two inches by three inches and have the weight tag at the very top of that. So that once you find the ADA sign, uh, you can just go to the bottom of the ADA sign and find our, uh, our plaque. And one of the things we're gonna do with that plaque is we will put it on the side of the ADA sign that is associated with the door that it's talking about. Uh, we've had experiences where sometimes uh, there's a ADA sign in a corner and there's a door to both sides. And which door is it applied to? Well, by us putting the plaque to the side, to the door that it applies to, you will know which door it's applying to. So once you scan that tag, it will tell you about that particular room. But just like on our tags here, where you swipe down to get to ingredient information or swipe to get to, uh, to the URL link, we'll have some things that you can swipe down. First off, the first thing that we'll give you, uh, the, the, the description will be just the name of that room. You swipe down the first time, it will tell you more information about that room, what's inside of that room. You swipe down again, 
uh, and we'll have a very specific order, just like our detail types, that there, there will be some things about what's nearby, you know, the other rooms that are nearby, and may even talk about couches and, and chairs and you know, water fountains or uh, just whatever is nearby. You swipe again and we'll get to, the, to a particular point that it will be a listing of rooms that are standard rooms, uh, restrooms, elevators, uh, stairs, exits. Uh, and so when you get to that, uh, those things will be in a very specific order. And so you will just swipe down uh, to those particular items. And once you get to that, you don't have to listen to all of the information as you're swiping down. You can listen just to the heading and know that's not the heading I want. You swipe again and that heading is not the one I want. You swipe again until you get to the, the one that you want. You, you may want to get to the men's restroom or the women's restroom or the elevator. And then once you get to that, it will just give you the information how to get directly from that particular point to the item that you've selected. And so then once you get to that item, whether it's an elevator or a restroom or the exit stairs, uh, we'll have, an, <clears throat> have another way tag uh, right under the ADA sign or right by the elevator buttons uh, that will help you uh, understand more information about that particular location and the relative uh, information to everything else. So that is how we will start. Uh, I will tell you one of the future things that we are going to do also, we have the capability to actually work <clears throat> with beacons. And so the beacons are much more general in nature. Uh, when you get information from a, a beacon, uh, you might be in a big lobby. And so it's not gonna give you the, the, the best information of how to get to a specific door, but it can talk in general that over to, uh, and we'll probably do it from a particular point that you, you've come, you've, you've entered that space. For example, if you've entered a building, uh, you don't know anything about that foyer, but you come in and you have your way around app on, and you're in that foyer, uh, you'll get the information directly from the beacon, and that beacon will know you probably just came through the front door. So it will give you information relative to that front door. So the information to the elevator would say, from the front door, proceed across the lobby about 30 feet, uh, go to the left uh, 10 feet, and you will be at the elevator station. Uh, and so there's some things that you would not even have to go to. For example, if you're needing the information about the directory of all the rooms in that building, uh, there's no reason to have to go over to a directory uh, that's on a wall somewhere. There's no reason to even find that. Uh, you just go to your app once you, once you heard the information from the beacon, you could just swipe down and go to directory and it would give you a list of all uh, the rooms and people that are in that building. So yes, we thought about a lot of things. There's a lot of questions. Uh, this is where we want to work with uh, different organizations to, to standardize these things. But we have thought that through. And the, the, the basic component is that you will know beforehand that, uh, where these tags will be. ADA signs will be the number one place. We'll also probably put some things at corners of intersections, uh, but we're gonna start with the ADA signs. Great. Um, so Darwin, we have a, um, a whole bunch of questions. Tina Hansen, you are on. You're gonna have to unmute yourself, Tina. There you well, go. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, this webinar series has just been totally awesome. I've been enjoying it. Um, you know, one of the things that I've really been harping on is uh, automation. And I know you guys hinted at that earlier. You know, what about partnering with uh, like the Directions for Me database um, to automate? Um, because that seems to be a very popular one in the blindness community. And, uh, you know, not to, I don't know how many people have a barcode scanner, but you know, what about partnering with directions for me so that uh, uh, there would be a way to actually tap into that database? Yeah, Tina, that's a great suggestion. And I know you've mentioned directions for me to me um, previously. And, you know, one of the, the things we are really relying on our community for is making some of those introductions. You know, we, we are, after this webinar series ends, we are definitely reaching out to some people to talk about some partnerships. And yeah. if anyone, um, you know, if anyone who's listening here knows people that we should partner with and knows how to get in touch with the right people, please get in touch, um, you know, connect at wayaround.com 
is mm -hmm. um, the best email address. So feel free to, you know, to make introductions and make suggestions. Thanks yeah, so much, because uh, I think directions for me would be a good start because they have, they have such an incredible database of uh, the directions. Uh, there is the issue of uh, how to work with uh, a barcode scanner because a lot of those barcode scanners are pretty expensive. So how do you get around that problem? Um, you know, yeah. how do you get around that problem? Because um, barcode scanners can be expensive. That's a good point. And, you know, people do have um, cameras on the smartphone. So I think that's one of the ways around it. Um, and they also, um, you know, there's some barcode scanners that are really great um, on the smartphone that are very blind friendly. I had a couple of people chat in that barcode scanners um, are, you know, on the smartphone are pretty difficult. So it's definitely something that we want to test out and make sure it's very user friendly. One of the things that we're committed to with this app is just to make sure that it is simple for everyone to use, whether you're, you have a small amount of vision loss, a lot of vision loss, if you're deaf blind or have some other cognitive disabilities that you're working with, all of those people are our users and we wanna make sure that Way Around works well for everyone. So thank you, Tina, that's a great suggestion. And um, let's see, I, I'm just gonna go in order. I know a lot of these people have already had questions. Um, v Baldwin, go right ahead. Oh, I didn't know I had my hand up again. <laughs> oh, you do. Hi, it's nice to hear oh, your voice hi. again. Oh, thank you. Um, I might suggest that Seeing AI has a nice uh, barcode scanner built yes. into it. Yes, it has the, um, the audible when you're getting close. That's a great suggestion. All right, yep, thank you. All I can add. Yep, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Brent, go right ahead. See, we're not hearing you yet, Brent. Okay, there, there we there go. You go. Um, I was uh, uh, also wanted to find out are they uh, recording this uh, after hour thing for part of the uh, webinar as well? Um, yes, absolutely. Okay, and also uh, uh, in addition to uh, directions for me, there's uh, there's another. Um, it's an app instead of a website. It's called Big Oven, um, that uh, has a lot of good recipes on it as well. So if uh, if people were a little bit flummoxed about getting to a website with Safari and stuff, sometimes it doesn't always work for me. Uh, you could try something like Big Oven and uh, open that on your. You know, go into your uh, phone and open that, and then uh, if you can find the recipe on there uh then you'd be able to uh maybe copy you know stuff from the clipboard and add that to the way tag as well yeah that's that's a great tip brent and i think adding recipes um there's several people who have said that's exactly what they're planning to do whether it's from a favorite recipe website or an app um or you know a grandma's recipe that's written down on a dirty index card you can transfer all of that into way around as well so great suggestion Okay, and um, Ariana, go right ahead. Ariana, it looks like you're still muted. Oh, there, there we go. go. Um, so I was typing while you were talking. <laughs> sure. Um, but now I can just say it. Um, I think there may be a standalone barcode scanner that works in that connects to your computer by usb that also works with directions for me that wouldn't i think it's directions for me um i don't know if it's still being developed it may also be um horizons for the blind um, um i'm not entirely certain but i remember hearing about it a few years ago and um i'm not sure how expensive it is but the information was was gotten via the web so it wasn't you weren't like paying for a database um unlike the id mate the id mate something that i have which to me is worth its weight in gold um <laughs> mm -hmm. but i couldn't have when i was when i had when it was given to me by rehab i couldn't have purchased it on my own because it was too expensive sure um but something else that might work is, um, I don't know if it's being actively developed still, but um, there's the Digitize app for the iPhone 
uh, I don't know if it's an Android app as well, but it's um, a barcode reader and it um, pulls from, I don't know what database, but it, it, it gets uh, directions for things and stuff. I don't know how complete it is, um, but maybe something that could work is, I don't know if this could even be a thing and it, it would probably have to be a completely different product um like an upgrade or something but maybe the waylink might be able to be modified to have a a barcode scanner that like connects to um you know some free online databases like directions for me or i don't that mm -hmm. other one that was mentioned barcode smart code or something yeah, smart forget, label I, there you go <laughs> yep yeah, those are all, there's just so many different databases out there. Ariana, you've mentioned some really good ones. Um, digitize, um, you know, directions for me. All of these are possibilities. And, um, you know, the, the great thing about um, directions for me is it really is optimized. And some of those other um, databases that you mentioned are also optimized for people with vision loss to make sure that it's going to work really well. Um, yeah with the voiceover and talk back and that sort of thing so yeah and, yeah, and i like the 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 your standard barcode scanner more than a phone because a phone camera doesn't have the same like wide angle view that a barcode scanner would sure like a dedicated yeah. one and it, i've i've gotten some barcodes to read and some others are just really really tough especially like on cans or oh I've heard whatever. horror stories oh I know like getting the whole thing in it's like you find part of it but you don't find all of it and cameras are getting better and better but I don't know what it is about the barcode scanner that makes it better I, I think it's like scans mul in multiple directions at once right. so maybe that's it or or something but definitely I think it would be really cool to pay, uh, you know, I don't know how much it would be to add a scanner because the, the ID may, the reason that's so expensive is just that it has a built-in database. Right, right. So well, just adding, gonna, adding the yeah, scanner Darwin, to the right would be really cool. Yeah, let, let me uh, let me address this. Uh, everybody, there's several people that are kind of coming, you know, giving us different uh, names, which is great. Uh, there's two there's two different pieces of this puzzle here. One is the scanner itself, uh, just being able to get that barcode. The barcodes themselves are nothing uh, nothing real important. They're just giving you uh, 13 or 15 numbers. That's all that the barcode itself does, uh, and the barcode. What it does, you know, whether whatever scanner you have, all it's doing is looking. It's just getting those 15 numbers, uh, and so uh, using a, a phone, uh, you know, some sort of smartphone, again, an Android or or iPhone, uh, being able to get that information, we can link to any type of scanner. Uh, we don't care. We, you know, we are agnostic about the type of scanner. It does not matter if you've got a scanner already. That scanner can be used. Uh, and so the same thing with the camera, as they get better, uh, you know, we can use that. The thing that we're, uh, well, the, the, the second part of the equation is the database. There are so many different people that have databases and those databases, uh, some of them are large, some of them are fairly small, some of them are optimized for people that have vision problems, uh, some of them are not. And so it's a matter of which database we use, but we're also agnostic about the database. We can use and link with any database, uh, but the challenge with the databases is the people had to spend money to develop those databases and they generally charge for developers like us to, to uh, have access to those databases. So we are trying to keep our costs down and we are looking for ways to be able to get a database that we're not having to pay a lot of money. If they're reasonable, we'll work with them. And so uh, any of these people that have the databases, we will talk with them and try to get, the, get access to those databases. But the, the, there's a third point that is the one that I really wanted to make is just as, you're, as, you, as you've discussed, reading a UPC code or any sort of, of code there with a camera or other devices, it's just cumbersome. It's just hard to do. 
And that's the whole reason we chose NFC because all you do is hold your phone up next to it and it gets it. It just immediately gets it. And so the thing that we're wanting to do is with these, uh, with these NFC tags, you only have to go to that barcode reader once. Once you've read it and you've got on that tag, no longer do you have to go to that product to get the information. Uh, you can move that tag from, the, uh, from that product to a similar product and you've already got all the links and stuff there done. So you no longer have to use that, uh, UP, that UPC reader. And that is the whole concept of why we use the NFC tag because you're not having to find it. You're not having uh, to focus in on it. And most of those times, those, uh, well, nearly all the time, those barcodes, they're just printed so that you have no tactile uh, place to find them. With the, uh, with the way tags, they are tactile. Even the sticker, you can feel that sticker. Uh, you know, if you do a clip, you definitely can feel that clip. So uh, these are the reasons that we chose NFC. Uh, and we're using the, uh, the UPC codes because that's what's out there. They've been used for 50 years. Uh, those started back in the 1970s and they are well, uh, well used everywhere. And the information will probably continue to be used with that. But the only thing that those UPC codes are doing is giving you those uh, 15 digits. And all we need are those 15 digits to link it to uh, databases. Yep. Thank you, Darwin. And Ariana, we will be in touch with you whenever we have something a little closer to um, testing so that we can get your feedback on that because you have a lot of great ideas. Um, and I actually see you, it looks like you put your hand back up. Did you want to add one more thing? Go right yeah. ahead, Ariana. So in the interim, while we're figuring out all this crazy stuff, um, could there maybe be like an option to have like a shared shared information so like uh, like I'm trying to figure out how that would how you could do that because you need to well, know yeah where yes. to like if someone else made like your can of tuna and you're like oh I don't want to write all this stuff in or whatever could there yeah. maybe be like a, a way tag database of of stuff and you could go oh I want to use this info yes Yes, that, that's, that's a great idea. Uh, it's one that we are, uh, have contemplated and we probably will do, it will be a very, it'll probably be a pretty simple thing to add. It's as you go in and you scan, uh, you know, the, these cans and you get the information, you get it linked to the different uh, databases or whatever. Uh, and once you write that information to the tag, all we would have to do is add something to say share. Uh, and it would share it with way around. So other people would be able to look up that particular item and, and get the information that you've already created. So uh, that is, you know, uh, that is a very good concept and we will probably incorporate that because it would not take us very long to get a sizable database if we do the crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is just allowing a lot of people to enter that information. And so as you enter the information once, other people could use it. As other people enter it, you could use their information. So yes, that's a great idea and we will be pursuing that. Good. Um, thanks, Ariana. And there's a 915 number. Go right ahead. Hello, Jessica. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. This, this is Mary Alice. I have two questions and I'm getting back to way to the basics here. Okay. One of them was, um, I had been on the one, I've been on all the calls. I think they're very, very informative and I thank you for doing them. Um, what, one of my questions is um, the only the oval and round tags can be used in the freezer and let's say the wash machine. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So the, the two different types of buttons, the um, oval hole button and the two hole button, those are guaranteed uh -huh. by our manufacturer. It's the highest waterproof rating and they are heat proof up to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit and cold proof down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And so with those, those are, again, those are guaranteed. Now, many people mm -hmm. use the stickers or even the clips in the freezer. All of the way tags, if you wipe them clean, that's fine. You know, you can use a wet rag um, as long as they're not submerged in water. 
And okay. these, the way tags have about a 10 year lifespan and you can, you know, the lifespan is about 10,000 scans. So they just last for a really, really long time. And if you're putting them in extreme conditions, the lifespan may be shortened a bit. You know, you may use it for eight years instead of 10 years. Um, we haven't been mm -hmm. around long enough to hear about any way tags just not working, but I know Darwin uses, um, you use the way clips in the freezer and you've had success yes. with that. So, you know, it's, it's not guaranteed, but lots of people do it. Okay. Now, yeah, because I was more concerned about the freezer than so much the, the, the wash machine. And the other one, today when you were flipping through, because I haven't really had a chance to play with mine, but when you're flipping through, are you scrolling left to right or are you going up and down from top to bottom uh, to good, like on put the way this information up? in? Yes, yes. it's, it's um, from left, it's from top to bottom. So it's just one from long top, column. Okay. 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 And then, okay. So then let's say I wrote the tag. I, you know, I created the tag. I wrote, I wrote the tag. I wanted to add, I go to the next field, I add it, but then I changed my mind and didn't want to put anything in there. How are you getting back to that previous screen or item or whatever? Yeah, really good question. You know, so you went into description and then into categories or whatever. How do you get back to, to that screen before. Sure. Are you a voiceover user, Mary Alice? Yes. Okay. So if you're, you know, if you swipe um, to the right to get to the next, then you would swipe left to get back and then you could just delete out the information or go back to select. Okay. Okay. That's, that's all I wanted to make sure of before I start messing around with these. Yep, and everything is just on, you know, one long screen. So um, you're not having to flip okay. back and through, you know, back and forth through screens. Okay, so, cool. Thank you very much. If you run into any trouble, just um, reach out. You can either give us a call or send an email, um, which is, a, I can actually get back to you faster via email right now um, with having little kids at home. But um, connect at wayaround.com or our phone number is on our website. Okay, thanks, Jessica. Great, yeah, thank you. Okay, and um, I have Tony, then Tina. Tony, you're unmuted. Okay, yeah. Um, well, Tina's gonna probably gonna bring up my other point, but um, since we're in this age of coronavirus, they want us not to be touching stuff. How are you going to, um, you were saying something about beacons and stuff. And um, my other thing was with the, uh, Barcode, yeah, those scanners are so expensive. I mean, we had one on loan for a while from a company, um, but we just can't afford it. And I was wondering, um, with the database, um, how would that, I mean, would we have to like scan the item first and then go to the database to grab the tag that someone created or how would that work? Let me, let me take that question, Jessica. Um, let me just let me just explain barcodes briefly. Uh, if you get an item that's got a barcode and you go to the cash register at the checkout uh, and they scan your your item, uh, all they're doing is getting those numbers off of that uh, that that code. You know, if if you were cited, you could look at the bottom of that code and they're actually printed under the barcode. You can actually read those numbers. And so sometimes uh, you know a checker might even. Uh, their scanner may not be working and so they get the can and they just look at it and they type those those uh, 15 numbers in and so once those numbers are in it goes in uh, to their uh, point of entry their their computer their cash register whatever and it's the same thing with the phone once you scan it with a UPC code it's just getting that code and and so then once it just this all happens in the background once it's got that code whatever app you're using they link that automatically to the database that that particular company or that particular app is using. Uh, right now, we are not linked to it uh, to a, a particular database. So, you know, getting the code, all we can do is get the code. Uh, but we can enter that code into other databases. Needed. You know, once we get access to those databases. So, uh, when you're getting a scanner. Uh, there's two parts of that scanner. One is to get that code that has those numbers. And then usually that scanner 
has some software in the background that's linking to a database. And so we will do the same thing. We will just have our software to link to a database. So that's not anything that you will be doing day in and day out when you're using it. Once we have linked to that database, you will just scan with the, the scanner, whether it's an external uh, scanner that you've linked via Bluetooth uh, to your phone or whether you're using the camera to get those numbers. However you get those numbers, uh, it will enter into Way Around and then Way Around will handle all of the information and just automatically will pop up on the screen. Okay. okay. Tony, the other piece is, you know, I. Right now, it's because we don't have a database. Um, it's all very theoretical. So I think some of the question that I heard is, you know, what are the steps to do it? And once we're a little bit further along, you know, we'll we'll have a much clearer, you know, way of explaining. This is what you do first, second, third. You know, if you're using the scanner, just your the camera on your phone versus an external, you know, barcode specific scanner. So those are all details to be worked out in terms of the process. And okay. Tony, you had, what was the first part of your question? COVID? Yes. Was it just oh. COVID and, and touching things? Yeah, I, I was um, talking, you, were, you guys were talking about with the way tags and stuff um, on, on the signs, um, in order for us to, since we have to be six feet away from everything, we have to use Ira to find the sign. And yes. Then, now, if the uh, tag has been touched by somebody and they wipe it down, will it survive? Yes, the, the tags can be wiped down. They could be sanitized. They can't be submerged, but um, you know, all of the ADA signs, they have a certain ADA type material. And so we're experimenting with you know, different uh, materials to use for those public tags. And the other thing I'll say, because a lot of people have brought up COVID and touching things and you know, the there's no one size fits all technology. You know, a beacon gets you pretty close, but it can have a lot of, you know, verbal clutter as you're walking along. It's just kind of talking at you yeah. all the time. Some things that you want, a lot of stuff that you might not want. So the marriage of multiple technologies, whether it's GPS, beacons, NFC, is really going to get you both the, the macro, you know, the big picture information and the very fine detailed information. And one of the advantages, um, you know, of an NFC tag or a way tag at a sign is that if you've ever been at a sign that, you know, if you're in an airport or a museum and it has a lot of information, a directory, um, people tend to congregate around that. So you could scan the tag and back away to where you're not physically right there at the sign, but get all of that information and not and still practice social distancing. And that's an advantage, you know, for people with, um, you know, perfect eyesight as well as people who um, are using it for the assistive technology. So okay. I think there's, um, you know, there is the concern of, you know, buildings keeping things clean and way tags are able to withstand that. So really good question. Go ahead, Tina. I think you're next. So, okay, Tina, I think I unmuted you. Uh, Hi. Hi. Hello, Hi. Tina. Hi. My question was about the uh, disinfecting of the tags. Maybe you kind of touched on that was if you wipe over them with a, a Clorox or a commercial disinfectant, will they will they survive that? You know, it's just sanitary sanitizing yeah so the tags that you're using um, at home if it's a really harsh chemical you know there's so many different variables you know is it uh, you know full strength you know bleach or is it diluted um, you know there's some of the green cleaners so a harsh chemical could potentially lower um, you know decrease the lifespan um, but in terms of just the moisture, yes, it'll it'll withstand that as long as you're not submerging it. And again, yeah, no, I'm I'm yeah, thinking well, of like a Clorox disinfectant wipe or like a simple green or something like that. Yeah, that. Just that, go ahead, Darwin. Yeah, one of the things. Uh, let me just explain the tag. Um, the the actual NFC tag, which is the antenna, is just one little layer. And it's at the very back of the tag. 
So when you're wiping a tag down, there is a plastic coating over the tag. So if that plastic coating gets uh, deteriorated some, it's not affecting the actual antenna of the tag, of the mm -hmm. NFC tag. And so it's one of those things that unless you just get after it, you know, to, to destroy that tag, you would have to, you know, cut into it or you would have to, I, I don't, I, I just don't know that you could even um, damage that tag with a, a pretty high, high uh, concentration of any sort of disinfectant because it's not going uh, on the actual antenna that is the sensitive part. That, that sensitive antenna is covered by that plastic that, uh, you, that you can feel. It's uh, kind of shiny. It's got the symbol on it. That is not the tag itself. The NFC tag is several layers below that. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Tina. And um, Debbie, go right ahead. You're unmuted. You may need to unmute yourself. Great seminar. Go, yeah. Great seminar, guys. Thank um, you. When you were talking about like the ADA signs and stuff like that, um, and it was exactly how I was going to utilize you guys at the MOCA conference for the blind this year. Um, but I have one of the things whenever I had talked to the hotel recently when we were talking about all the COVID things and stuff, we were addressing about having um, about the possibility of putting location stickers or something on all of the hand sanitizer dispensers. It, would that work with way around tags or would that be better to use beacon technology on that? You mean just to help people find them? Correct. So with the way tags, they would need to be really close within about an inch. So if, you know, if you had a hand sanitizer next to a soap and, you know, they felt really similar, that would be a great use for way around so that they could scan and know this dispenser is hand sanitizer. This one is, you know, foaming soap or whatever it is. Okay. Um, it, if it was, you know, you have kind of a stanchion in the middle of a big hall um, right. and, you know, and you want people to be able to locate where that is, that, um, that wouldn't be the best use for a way tag, in my opinion. Darwin, if you have other thoughts, feel free. Yeah, that, in that case, uh, fi just finding uh, where that station is or finding it, though, know, that uh, to, to know that the sanitizers are next to the door or they're on a particular wall somewhere, uh, to find them, uh, it would be best to use a beacon because the beacon can tell you that that station is in the middle of the room, uh, it's on a tile surface, there's, you know, it's next to some steps or something like that, and it will okay. get you in that general general location. The thing about our tags, the, the purpose of the tags is to give you very specific location-based information or very specific item-based information. Jessica's example of having two different bottles that are side by side and you don't know what they are, that's what the way tags are for, to give you that very specific information about which one is which and the ingredients of those. But to get general information how to find something, uh, uh, using a way tag is not going to be the best solution. That's where okay. we will be integrating our, our uh, technology with beacons. Beacons will get you to the general location. Uh, gotcha. You know, if, if you have way around, once we get the, the beacons in, and I, 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 want, to, I want to iterate, reiterate, uh, that is down the road. We don't have that, you know, right now. That's not happening, uh, you know, this year, uh, definitely. Okay. Uh, so, but once we do have the beacons, uh, the beacons with way around, you will come in and the beacons can reach out, you know, 30, 50, 75 feet, depending on what type of beacon you're using. And the beacon would give you information, but it would give you information that is much more general in nature. It would describe the room in general, but it's not going to know exactly where you are uh, unless we link that with some other technology that gets the directions of the beams and that type of stuff. And, right. and you know, that type of technology people are working on right now, they're trying to refine that. And one of the things that we are trying to do is utilize the technology that other people develop and pull the technologies, 
the multiple technologies, the databases uh, that people have created for UPC codes, the databases right. for drugs, the, the different technology of beacons, of QR codes, of NFC tags, uh, and then using the technology uh, linking via Bluetooth to uh, you know, code scanners, uh, to uh, braille displays, uh, just to what you know, to earbuds. So we, you know, we're trying to not develop all the specific technologies. We're trying to link them together Correct. so that you like have the getting access. The, getting the yes. company's API stuff and and integrating them together. Yes. Yes. Um, the the other question is when you were mentioning like the public restrooms and stuff to designate soap versus hand sanitizer. I'm guessing then that we could do this as well with like the um, the the free things that they put in the hotel room to like identifying the shampoo from the conditioner from the body lotion. Because exactly. they're all okay. Yes. Because I had actually reached out to Crabtree and Evelyn, who um, DoubleTree uses, because we were going to do this at the DoubleTree Hilton there in Art in Bentonville, and we were going to try to work together in partnership in with Crabtree and Evelyn about um, doing something with their with their product line that we could make it more accessible for the people at the conference. That's yes. great. Yeah, we, we, um, we have a lot of thoughts about that, Debbie. So let's definitely touch base and we can discuss how we can move forward with that. Awesome, that'd be great. Thank you guys Good. so much. Yeah, thank you. And we have um, three more questions, Carrie, Ariana, and then Tina and Brent, four questions. And Brent, we'll end with you. Carrie, go right ahead. Looks like you need to unmute yourself. And let me scroll back up. So if you are on a Mac, it's Command Shift A, PC, Alt A. Oh, you just, you're going off and on. One more time. Phone star six. Okay. There are you go. there? Yep, here we are. <laughs> um, hi, first of all, um, I, have really enjoyed all of the uh, the webinars. Uh, my husband and I actually purchased a Waylink and a starter pack, so we're like super excited to oh, receive great. those. Um, my question is, at, and it's we're I'm not related to the uh, public stuff and all that, but I'm just curious which um which tag would be recommended? Like if you want to. Um, what, uh, put a tag on your credit card um, to, uh, you know, have all the information off your card. Um, would that be like a sticker? Or which tag would you recommend for that? Uh, Jessica, let me answer that. Yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah, you know, we, we discussed that in one of our earlier webinars. And at that point in time, I mentioned using uh, either a round sticker or a square sticker uh, and that uh, putting that on the opposite end of the chip that's in the card and that works well and I've been doing that for a long time for probably a year now and I've had absolutely no problems using either the round sticker or the square sticker but recently about uh, two weeks ago I went to a gas station uh, that it did not uh, read the chip it was it was reading the bar on the side of the card and it wasn't one of those uh, uh, readers that you just swipe down the edge of the card. You still had to stick the card, the entire card into the reader. So it was an old type of, of bar reader, magnetic strip reader. Mm. And when I stuck my, uh, the particular card that I had, I'd used a square sticker on that. The square stickers are considerably thicker than the round stickers and mm. my card got stuck inside of the, of the reader. It's the that only was. one that that has, uh, has happened in well over a year. Uh, but I was able to get it out uh, and I just peeled the sticker off and was able to go ahead and use the card. So uh, I am now recommending to only use the round stickers, don't use the square stickers. Uh, <laughs> if you have a card that is metal, 
I would suggest getting one of the plastic pouches. Uh, you can order those. I think we uh, sent that out on a, a web link in the webinar before that you can order those and, and your card will just slide into oh, yeah. it. And so uh, I would, you would have to put a square tag on the outside of that plastic piece so that you would know that what the card is and you would have all the information uh, such as the, uh, the code, you know, the, uh, the, the date, the registration and that kind of stuff. Uh, it would be on that outside of that plastic uh, pouch. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, great question, Carrie. And if you have other questions, feel free to get in touch. Thanks so much. Okay, and Darwin, we did have um, somebody ask a question through the chat. Just why do you need a login to use the app? And I think it's a good question. Do you want to give a brief answer to that and then we'll go on to Ariana? Yes, uh, the app is account based. Uh, and so the only way that you can get to your account is you have to log in to your account. You're not logging in so much to way around as you are logging into your account. You're using way around to be able to read the stickers. Uh, when we get to public information, if you're not gonna create your own account, uh, the, uh, like at a museum, that museum will have their own account, uh, but they may make a, a guest where you're not gonna create your own account, and therefore you would not have to log in to way around. Great, thank you so much. And Ariana, you're unmuted. Hello, I finally got the hang of this unmuting thing this pop-up is new oh it's really, yes it's really great though good um <clears throat> but i have a feeling the answer i have a feeling i know what the answer is going to be um but i just want to check so <clears throat> with the custom details um like the labels mm -hmm. can you save a label to use later on, or would you just have to rescan a tag where you would want to reuse that label? Yeah, really wow, good does question. That make sense? <laughs> yeah, Darwin, do okay. you do you want to answer, or do you want me to? Well, I, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question exactly. So why don't you go ahead? Do you understand? Okay. The question? Yeah. So oh. Ariana, let me let me try, and then if I'm not getting it, um, you can rephrase the question. So okay. in order to reuse the label right now. The, if you're, you know, if you have, um, you know, a recipe or something and then you want to link and maybe change the link, you would need to use the edit to save most things and then you could change something. One of the things that we've thought about for a future development is to allow you to create your own um, custom details where if you had certain things, a couple of people have asked about you know, tagging collections of music, CDs or vinyl. And if you want to know, you know, the artist in the year or whatever it is, and you have all those standard labels and you would go through and change the information, um, that's something that we may introduce in the future. There, it's not currently under development, but, um, you know, if a lot of people start saying, you know, they would really love to have that, it's something we would consider. Is that answering your question? Sort of. Let me okay. give an example and maybe that would help. Yeah. Um, so I have not yet started, but I really want to get better at knitting. And knitting involves a ton of yarn. And one thing that custom, because obviously like clothing wouldn't really cover what I'm, what I'm wanting to do. So I'd have to do like custom, like, um, like brand, fiber content, um, how many yards is in this crazy giant skein um, yes. stuff like that so besides um scanning this tag and 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 like scan and putting and hitting edit and scanning a new tag could i just save those custom custom labels kind of like saving custom labels in the phone app where you're like oh hey this is a Skype number or this is a pager or something? Yes, let me answer that question. Um, great question. We have, uh, we have discussed that many times. That is a great idea. Uh, we, uh, we have come very close to developing that multiple times uh, because that will be a great thing. It's uh, uh, what we will call it is, you know, just being able to save your own uh, detail type. And so the list yes. of, of 
10, 10 items that you have uh, right now that we've provided for you. Uh, if you go in and you set up different fields uh, with phone numbers, URLs, uh, addresses, uh, you know, the different information about your yarn, whatever you set up. Uh, and then if you were able to save just that detailed type, not necessarily all the information that's, uh, that goes into all those fields, but just yeah. the fields themselves. Yes, that would be a custom detail type. And that is something that is on our list to develop. Okay, because that would be really good for me. Um, like with my husband, um, I, um, it'd be kind of cool if you could add them to the specific picker item. So like, for example, uh, my husband's allergic to coconut. So like, I, it's not a humongous, Lee, it's not like he's going to go like into anaphylactic shock or anything, but it is disruptive for him. Um, and it'd be really cool if I could add like a custom detail, but say this is grocery and I could say contains, you know, coconut or, or obviously if it didn't contain coconut, I wouldn't use it, but um, that'd be a really handy thing to add. Um, not just the custom label, but more labels in this in the same categories that you've already provided yes yeah that that's a great suggestion ariana and definitely one that um we we would love to do sometime in the future so thank yeah. you so much and uh tina go right ahead tina hansen oh let's see tina it looks like you're still muted There you go. Okay. Tina. Thank you. A um, couple of things. I noticed that with your the recordings of your these webinars, the audio recordings, Zoom is not making these available as MP3. Is there any way you could convert these to MP3? Um, I. Why don't you get in touch with me, Tina? It is um, the audio conversion is much more difficult. Um, so I, I have to. If I want an MP3, I have to go to YouTube and convert it. Okay, yeah, that may be the best way. Okay. So, yeah, um, Zoom doesn't give me that option, unfortunately. I think it's only an MP4. Okay. okay. Um, I wanted to also comment on, you know, we were talking about barcodes earlier because the big thing that I'm harping on is, is where the database, where it, you know, this quick link to the database so you don't have to do any data entry at all. Uh, is kind of what I'm after here because, you know, I'm after big time automation, especially for things like I've heard scenarios of people getting boatloads of cans, boatloads of dinners, boatloads of this, boatloads of that. And uh, this is one reason I'm into big time automation is, you know, if you're in, if you're buying in bulk, you don't want to have to do all that. Uh, that's why I would like to see like a one or two step process in order to get into the database. Have you thought about partnering up and selling a barcode scanner or something like that to add to the package? Yeah, you know, I think, um, Tina, right now, the biggest um, question that we're pursuing is really that database, you know, and, yeah. getting, and getting all of those, all of the product information in. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that is the next piece of the puzzle that we're gonna work on and then figuring mm -hmm. out some potential additional barcode scanners will come right after that. So. Right, but getting that database, and that's why I mentioned, uh, I had mentioned directions for me because uh, their site, uh, their site is optimized and I know that uh, there has been a barcode scanner that's linked to your computer, but uh, if people are not going to be on their computer, should there be a way to link this through your smartphone? And uh, because, uh, you know, directions for me in a computer, you, you could use your barcode scanner to link up to the product, but if you're using your mobile phone, that's not an option. So what do you right. do? Yeah, that's a really good point. I think getting yeah. in touch with directions for me is um, we will do that in the very near future. So yeah, I, I would really encourage that because, uh, and then uh, you had some blog posts really, really early on about essential oils. Um, number one, what is the best tag to use for uh, bottles of essential oils? And number two, have you thought about uh, doing more YouTube videos? Because I have noticed that the blog's been kind of dead lately. Um, so on the essential oils, it, um, 
the wake clips are really what um, Colleen had done that post and she recommended the wave clips because the stickers, the oil bottle is too, um, too small to, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the sticker to go around and it still read, but with the clip, you can just get a rubber band and tie it around. And it's just about the same height as those essential oil bottles. And she thought it just worked really, really well. And it's a great use for way around because, you know, mm -hmm. Colleen is a big um, brailler. She has a lot of braille labels, but some of those essential oils are very, very long. So she yeah, actually true. put the name and all of the different ingredients. So, oh yeah, that's yep. actually one of the big limitations of Braille that uh, we've heard people talk about because, you know, how many times have I heard, if, you know, if you try to do a Braille label, it's either, you know, put a, a, put some code in a small space and supplement it with a book, or it's kind of an all or nothing thing with Braille. Um, and that's not a criticism, that's not a thing against Braille. It's just the fact that the media is what it is. But um, that's why I really appreciate uh, what Way Around is doing because, you know, it's one reason I really have taken to it. And I'm glad that these, uh, these webinars have done so well is just, it's because it gives you that ability to have a lot of information in a small space. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tina. And I, we have gone almost a full hour for the questions and answers, and I told Brent um, that he would be the last one, so I'm going to turn it over to him. And um, I know there's still some other hands up, so after this, um, you can send me an email, connect at wayaround.com. I keep almost slipping up and saying .org, but we are wayaround.com, um, and you can send me uh, an email, and I would love to get back to you there. So Brent, go right ahead. Looks like you're still muted. I'm mute. Okay, now okay. I am. Yep, you're good. Okay, yeah, I was wondering, uh, like in the uh, uh, maybe the more distant future, but I was wondering if there. I, I kind of heard him say something about museums. Um, uh, I was wondering also, like with things like zoos, if uh, they will um, maybe have descriptions, like by some of the cages. You know, I mean, we all know that. For example, a lion looks like a, a big cat, but uh, is there a way that they could make a weight tag or something that would describe, you know, how big is he? Is, you know, is he, you know, how many pounds? Is, is, does his fur feel like a big, like a house cat or is it coarser? Or is he, uh, you know, how, you know, some of the details to really give a description. And uh, also I'm thinking like airports and, you know, the kiosks and stuff, uh, restaurants. Uh, Yep. Yeah. yeah. Some, some of those things. Hey, Brent, you want a job? We'll hire you. All those things. I wish. I wish. I'm looking. <laughs> no. I'm looking for. A, I need a job. I definitely need a job. I would do yeah. it too. That would be right well, up my alley. Well, once we, you know, once we start um, growing and expanding, um, you know, we can be. In touch. Um, I'm I'm joking with you a little bit, but yeah, that's exactly where we're going. And we have been in touch. Um, there's a lot of. Um, there's a big movement towards accessibility in museums and other cultural organizations, and I would throw zoos in to that category. We have talked with some, um, you know, of that type, whether it's, you know, a zoo or um, um, an aquarium, that type of thing where you could put in audio, you could put in, and, you know, a lot of those um, very scientific places like a zoo or an aquarium that they're actively studying, you know, they have signage for, um, for sighted people that give some of that type of information. And so it's just, it's hard to access it. And all of that information that's available for sighted people could be put on a way tag. But then they've also said, you know, gosh, on our website, we have all of these audio files and video files where you can hear, you know, the sounds of different lions, you know, different species, that type of thing. And that could all go on a way tag as well. So yes, there's a lot of, um, a lot of ways that way around could be used. So it's a it's a great it's a great suggestion, and you know we're working. Um, I think I mentioned earlier we're a small team. Um, we're trying to make sure that everything we put out is really high quality and works for a very wide variety of people. And we're also actively looking for um, those partner organizations. So if you know a zoo, or if you know 
um, you know, and other type of cultural organizations. We Museums are one of the categories that we're really wanting to um, have as some of our first, um, our first customers to put way around cool. and set those okay. standards. So definitely be in touch if you know of someone who would benefit from this. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you're kind of joking about the job, but heck, I'd even do it volunteer if, I, if there was a way for anybody to help uh, help you guys, uh, you know, make way tags or, or anything like that to to do some of that stuff. That'd be great. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you, Brent. And Thanks. I and I'll end on that note. Um, and I see there are a couple of other hands up, and I do have a hard stop here in another minute or two. But please do send me an email so I can get back in touch with you. And you know, one of the things from this webinar series that has just really blown me away is um, the number of people who have offered to help. And we're a grassroots movement. We're going to grow because people like Brent and Tina and Diana and the other 50 or so of you who have stuck around for an extra hour, you know, you're wanting to help us the best that it can be. And I just can't thank you enough for being part of the community and for all of the ways that you've supported us and given us feedback. So Darwin, do you want to um, wrap us up here in the next minute? Yes, uh, I, I too appreciate all the comments, uh, the good feedback, uh, just the positive uh, feedback that everyone is giving. Uh, we do want to uh, expand, you know, we've got so many ideas, it's hard to pick which one we want to go with next. And so I appreciate the ideas and we, uh, one of the things by you sending us those ideas, it will help us pick which one to do next. Uh, the other thing that, that Brent mentioned is uh, doing some things uh, from a volunteer perspective. We have had multiple people say that they will help us even creating videos. Uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, and so if you think that you want to make some videos, uh, we can you know, contact us and we can tell you some things that uh, we're wanting to get videos to help people understand better. We want to do some of these videos very professionally, but it's also good to just have videos from end users because they're very believable, very real. You know where the rubber meets the road. So uh, again, grassroots movement, help us get this going. Uh, the more people we get involved in this, the more we can expand, the more we can get things out there for you. Great. Well, thanks again. Um, please do email us and we will be in touch about our next webinar series really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.